we are going to find the first renal zero terms in the Taylor polynomial approximation for this differential equation right here. We have x double prime plus tx is equal to zero, and this will indicate that x is the function of t, right? Because we have the x double prime, and here we have the t. And here we have the initial conditions. x of zero is equal to one, and this will tell us that when t is equal to zero, x will be one. And this right here is x prime of zero is equal to zero, which it says when t is equal to zero, x prime will be zero. And now we're looking for the first three non-zero terms. This is going to give us the first term, right? We have the one, and that's going to be the constant term because that's the value of the function. And unfortunately, we have the first derivative is equal to zero. That means we have to get more derivative, right? This is not the second term because it's going to be zero. Anyway, let's look at this. This is going to give us the second derivative. We have x double prime plus tx is equal to zero. Let's just move this to the other side. So we can have x double prime equals to negative tx, right? And now we can just plug in the values accordingly, right? When t is equal to zero, plug in here. When x is one, plug in here. So we have negative zero times one, and we end up with zero for the second derivative as well. And that means we have to go for more derivatives and just keep going. All right, so to get the third derivative, We'll be looking at this, and you see this is negative t times x. So we have to use the product rule, right? I'm going to pair this up as negative t as my first function and x as my second function. The product rule is we'll keep the first function, negative t, and times the derivative second, which is going to be x prime. And then we're going to add it with the second function times the derivative of the first, which is just going to be negative 1. And now we're plugging the values accordingly again. We have this negative, and then we have the t, which is 0. And then x prime, which is 0. And this is plus. And I'm just going to set it as how it is, right? Plus x is 1, right? This is the 1 for the x value. And then multiply by negative 1. Oh, this is negative 1 from here. And we are just going to work this out. This is going to give us 0, and this is going to give us negative 1. And that's what we have for the third derivative. And you see, this is going to give us the first non-zero term. This is going to help us to get the second non-zero term. We need one more term, so we have to go ahead and do more derivatives. Okay, so I am going to go for the fourth derivative. The notation will be x, and then put a parenthesis right here, and a little 4 inside to indicate that this is the fourth derivative. And we have to differentiate this again. Here we have to use the product rule one more time, right? Okay, so. First function is negative t times the derivative second, which is going to be x double prime, and then we add it with the second function, which is x prime, and then we multiply by the derivative of the first, which is going to be negative 1, right? And then we are going to differentiate this. Uh, I will just put a minus, because see here, we have a minus, and the derivative of the x is just going to be x prime, because once again, x is the function of time. Okay, so this right here, we can combine the terms real quick. This is the same as negative t times x double prime, and this and that, they are both x prime, right? So we have minus 2x prime. Okay, now plugging values accordingly. This is negative, and the t is equal to 0. And the second derivative is 0. So we just plug in 0 again, and then minus 2, and we multiply by x prime, which is 0. And yes, everything ends up to be 0. So that means we have to go ahead and do one more, right? Okay, so look at this, and then differentiate it again. We can get the fifth derivative, and the notation is x, and then little parentheses fine like this. Okay, we're going to use the product rule here. So I'll keep the first function, negative t times the derivative second, which is x double prime, uh, triple prime, like this, prime, prime, prime. And then we'll be adding with the second function, which is x double prime times the derivative of the first, which is going to be negative 1. And then the differentiation of this is going to be negative 2x double prime. And we will combine terms real quick. This is going to be negative t. Right, this is negative t times x triple prime, and then this is negative x double prime minus 2x double prime. So we have minus 3x double prime like this. Okay, plugging values accordingly again, negative is still negative, t is 0, and then x triple prime is negative 1. So let's plug in negative 1 right here, and then minus 3 times x double prime, which is 0. Oh my god, this is still going to be 0, right? So that means we have to do the derivative one more time and just keep going to see who can get something that's not zero. Okay, x parentheses to 6 for the sixth 
derivative. Differentiate this by using the product rule again. This is going to be negative t times the derivative of this, which is going to be x, parentheses four like this, for the fourth derivative. And then we are going to be adding this with x triple prime times the derivative first, which is going to be negative one. And then differentiate this, which is negative three x triple prime. You can combine them real quick. This is going to give us negative t x and then what? For the fourth derivative, right? And then this and that together is going to give us negative four x triple prime. Okay, so we have negative and the t is zero, right? And x four is zero. So the first part is going to give us zero again. And then minus four is the four. And this is triple prime, which is negative one, right? So we have this negative one right here. This is zero and this together is just going to be positive four. Okay, so we are ready to go. Here is going to be the first three non-zero terms of the Taylor polynomials. I will write it down here. So I'll put on P of T. And the reason that we're using T is because T is our independent variable, right? Okay, we are going to put down the constant term first, which is one. And the first derivative is zero, the second derivative is zero, the third derivative is negative one. So let me put it down as plus negative one over, since this is the third derivative, so we will have to divide this by three factorial. And this is going to be multiplied with x to the third power, sorry, t to the third power, because the independent variable is t. Okay, t to the third power, and we see that this 4 is for the 6th derivative, right? So we'll be adding with 4 over 6 factorial t to the 6th power. This is pretty much a setup. We have the first, second, third non-zero terms. Okay, this is just 1, and then this is plus. Well, I will just write it down as minus because we have the plus negative, right? So minus 1 over 3 factorial is the same as 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 t to the third power, and then this is 4, and 6 factorial. It's the same as saying uh, 6 times 5 times 3 times 2 times, times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? So you see that the 4 and 4 cancel, and you can see that this is going to be plus 1 on the top over 6 times 5 is 30 times 3 is 90 times 2 is 180, and then this is t to the sixth power, and this is it, right?